Revitalization is of a severely endangered language where there are some old people still speaking the language. One of the famous revitalized languages is Hawaii, which we have already mentioned. Hawaii is a fascinating case of both a severely endangered language and a revitalized language. Classical Hawaiian is spoken by about 300 speakers in Niiho Island, which is the seventh largest of the inhabited Hawaiian islands in the United States of America. Neo Hawaiian is a revitalized language spoken by approximately 3,000 people who are non native living on the other islands Oahu, Maui, Hawaii, or Hawaii. These people can hold a conversation at varying levels of proficiency, mostly at the lower end. Census data indicate more than 10,000 speakers of revitalized Hawaii, but that number is unreliable and currently inflated. Hawaiian offers scholars a unique laboratory to explore the constraints of language revitalization. Genetically engineered Neo-Hawaiian can indeed be systematically compared to the organically evolving Classical Hawaiian, as the latter is still spoken by several hundred people, who are unfortunately not involved in the reclamation. Consider pronunciation. In Classical Hawaiian, there are hoe hoe to paddle a canoe, and hoi hoi, interesting, fun. In revitalized Hawaiian, both words are pronounced the same, hoi hoi, reflecting American English, which fails to distinguish between the diphthong oe and the diphthong oi. Speakers of revitalized Hawaiian have a hard time clearly pronouncing mau versus mao, mae versus mai, pae versus pai, and so forth. Often in language revitalization, authenticity is superseded by emblematicity. What do I mean by emblematic? Let me give you an example from accents. If you manage to imitate the R of Scottish, say for, and the glottal stop of Scottish, say Scottish, and the O vowel as in moose, whose, people might think you are Scottish even though in many other aspects your accent is totally unscottish. The reason is that the pronunciation of the r, t, uh, uh, and the long vowels, consider the great vowel shift in the history of English, are emblematic in Scottish English. Now let us move to revitalized languages. As we saw in week two, the prescriptive pronunciation originating from an imprisoning purism prism give us authenticity or give us death, would result in death. What happens then is that the reclaimers will choose an emblematic characteristic of the revitalized language and over apply it similar to hypercorrection, sometimes even at the expense of authenticity. Consider Ngarindjeri, an Aboriginal language spoken in South Australia. In classical Ngarindjeri, the pronunciation of the name Ngarindjeri, Ngarindjeri was Ngarindjeri, with the first R being as an Italian and with the second one being as in English, so R and R. But in revitalized Ngarindjeri, the pronunciation is Ngarindjeri. Both R's are pronounced unlike English, R as in Ferrari. The emblematic characteristic R is selected in order to conduct othering, that is, defining Ngarindjeri vis-à-vis the other, in this case the colonizer's mother tongue, Australian English.